So hi, this is Yvonne Skenzi uh, doing her podcast on Pioneers to Powerhouses, the podcast that explains how PR has actually helped some amazing founders um, get where they get where they've got to today. And I'm actually having a lovely chat with Barmak Mefta, who is a very old friend of mine. Well, he's not old, but he's he's a friend of mine from, from times past. And um, we've worked together now for, I don't know, maybe 13, 14 years, Barmak. Do you want to say hi and introduce yourself? Absolutely, Yvonne. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. And I would actually venture out and say it's probably closer to 20 years that we've known each other. We um, started Fortify back in 2003, and I want to say it was probably about 2005, late 2005, early 2006, when we entered the EMEA market. And of course, um, as Kenzie was the first PR agency and the only PR agency we worked with. So yeah, coming up on 20 years, Yvonne, so okay. it's always great to chat with you. So I can say you're an old friend in that case, can I? <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. That's absolutely. Um, both probably both got more ha gray hair than we had twenty years ago. So, um, so we've worked together. You've, you, I mean, the power of PR has been very, very important to you, hasn't it, in building up both Fortify and then Alien Vault. Um, and I remember you phoned me up and said to me, "Hey, I've just started this new company called Alien Vault. I know." And this was right at the very beginning. There was mm -hmm. literally just bought, bought these guys, and it was like, okay. Um, You'd you you you'd taken uh you know you bought all the lovely guys from Madrid and we were there we met in Madrid didn't we in that amazing football pitch and you said Yvonne mm -hmm. we need your help we want to get going as soon as possible with PR why was that Barmak why did you think that was so important from day day one Yeah so uh, first of all I think you know the key to a successful communications plan for any company is what I call a ground game and an air game and um. You know, it's interesting because the two companies I did in cybersecurity kind of were the antithesis of one, uh, of one another. Fortified, you know, was very evangelical, very educational. We created um, essentially the static analysis market for application security, again, dating back about 2021 20, years. And it took us a better part of three years to really educate the market around what static analysis is and why is it so important to find security vulnerabilities in code. And I would argue sort of where ground game there was really important, where we would meet every chief of security officer one at a time, especially in financial services, and try to educate them why this is important. The air game, which I would put in the category of a great PR and a comms plan, is as important because you want to broaden the horizon of how you educate the market. And so at Fortify, kind of PR and comms played more an evangelical role around us establishing that market. In Alien Vault, it's almost the opposite because it was a market that was very established. The SIM and the log management and the threat detection market was, was, uh, was very established. However, with Alien Vault, we we're trying to do a different play on it, which was how do we take, you know, what was essentially only the purview of of the big enterprises down market at the small to medium sized businesses and make it more affordable and easier to be able to do threat detection. So whereas whereas that Fortify PR and comms played more an educational role at Alien Vault, it played more a role of how do we stay above the noise because there are so many players in the market and how do we establish ourselves as a differentiated solution for mid-market companies. And in both cases, I would argue PR and comms played an essential role albeit for different objectives. And interestingly, Alien Vault was one of these companies that was loved because of the branding. People loved it. It was kind of, it was kind of different, wasn't it? It was a little bit, it was so different. You'd walk around an event and you'd, and everybody would always stop and look at the Alien Vault stands. You stood out, didn't you? And made sure that everything from the marketing was about trying to be different and standing out. Exactly. Yeah, it was it was more of an edgy play. I mean, if you think about it, when you're trying to take a contrarian view to kind of, um, you know, what the incumbents had, had established, what you have to do is kind of stand above the noise that comes in the form of better communications, but it also comes in the form of very unique and edgy brand that kind of, uh, you know, grabs everybody's attention. So I actually credit, you know, Alien Ball's success to a large part around a great product strategy, but also a phenomenal marketing strategy and brand strategy that we'd established. Um, and, and of course, you know, sort of a Skenzi and all, all our PR agencies and communication strategy and brand strategy had, had a key role to play in, in ensuring that we kind of stay above everybody else.
You know, it's interesting because um, I was going to I was going to talk to you about the fact that you're now um, you've set up your founder of, of an amazing company called Ballistic Ventures, um, which is actually a company that is is in a nutshell about a, a VC fund for startups in the cybersecurity space. And I was going to say that you know, it'd be interesting to hear your advice about actually how do you go about advising um, the startups because. I was going to say that when you're, branding is all, all about sort of trying to very quickly get your message across as quickly as you possibly can and differentiate yourself from, from the competitors. Um, how do you think, I, I mean, I, I think I know how, how you do that. How do you think you go about doing that, Barmag? Cybersecurity is a very unique market in high tech in that, um, you know, security controls are getting reinvented on an ongoing basis. Um, and that's due to two reasons. One is the computer architecture shifts every eight to 10 years where the attack surface explodes. And that gives birth to more threat vectors potentially going against your assets, which then essentially war warrants some new innovation. Um, but then there's one key element in cybersecurity that you don't see anywhere else in high tech, and that's the adversary. So no er other area in, in tech has the adversarial element, which forces the obsolescence of security controls on an ongoing basis. And these two axes, you know, computer architecture shifts and the adversary constantly reinventing themselves kind of forces the reinvention of these security controls much more frequently than, again, any other area in high tech. The good and the bad of it is that from a venture capital perspective, it gives birth to enormous opportunities to invest in new innovations, um, you know, on an ongoing basis. The bad is you have a ton of cybersecurity companies. So for the security buyer, it becomes harder and harder to distinguish between, you know, sort of which vendor is saying what exactly. Because, you know, after a while, you kind of feel like all the vendors are saying the same things over and over again. And so, you know, what I tell our founders typically in the early stages is, is critical to obviously find your ICP, your product market fit, your product strategy who you're selling to. But, but contemporaneous with that is really, really essential to come up with a very succinct calm strategy to be able to set you apart from everybody else. Because I guarantee you, you know, eight to 10 other vendors are going to be saying almost the same exact thing as you're saying. Sure. And it's going to become really essential to the buyer to be able to hear what you're saying versus eight to 10 others. So comms becomes a really essential part of the company, even at inception, especially in the areas of cybersecurity. Yes, and I think it's. I think that's the most important thing. How do you stand out when there's three others, three thousand other cybersecurity companies, um, all vying for the same space? And I think it's so overcrowded. So I think exactly. that's what people need to do. They need to say, okay, what am I? Am I the leading pen tester? Am I the leading, um, you know, pre preventer in dark, in deep fake? What is it that you're trying to do? And trying to almost get it down to three words so that if you do get any coverage, people go, oh, they are the leaders in pen testing. They're the leaders in this, you know, exactly as I said to you, Barmak, you are the VC in for cybersecurity startups. We are the cyber, you know, Skenzie is the cybersecurity PR agency. And I think that's the most important thing that you can kind of try and solidify is what are those three or four things you can say very quickly to somebody? And if you haven't got that, then you really are stuck. And I think from the very beginning, you need to do that. Don't 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 you think? Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. And you know, it's it's interesting because it's it's a very creative exercise. I mean, you, you would think, and often founders fall in the trap of look, it's pretty easy. I mean, we know what we're doing, and as long as we say what we're doing, everybody's going to appreciate and understand it. And effective communications, especially in, in very crowded spaces, becomes a very creative exercise. And um, you know, going through PR firms and communication firms that specialize in that area, kind of appreciate the nuances of how economic buyers and CISOs think about hearing that message and coming up with creative brand and creative comm strategies is, is not an easy feat, but I would argue it's a really, really important feat, especially at inception. Yeah, and I agree. I mean, the creativity is the thing that stands uh, stands everybody out from, from the others. I mean, now that's what I always think about Alien Vault. We were all incredibly creative when it came to branding and marketing um, and the image, um, the wording, everything we did, there was a, it was very much curated. There was a lot of thought 
from from the from the get go about how we were going to craft the whole alien voice message from from the beginning to the very end. And I think, oh my, I, whenever I talk to you, you, always say to me, Yvonne, I've got to get off the phone. I've got another board meeting. Um, I, I always, and I know you've got yet another board meeting coming up. But, but <laughs> how, how has kind of PR helped you win over investors? Do you think they pay a lot of attention to PR? Yeah, I... Well, uh, it's a good question. So, uh, you know, when you say um, investors, I sort of put them in two categories. Uh, there is kind of uh, PR and comms for venture capital funds, us included. And and that has to do with how do we um, market ourselves as a venture capital firm, primarily to entrepreneurs. Remember, the audience we serve um, are, are the entrepreneurs, are the founders. Uh, now, we're blessed with the fact that, you know, our team really is comprised of an incredible composition of cyber founders, entrepreneurs, ourselves. And so we're fairly well, well known in the industry and, and on entrepreneurs do come, come to us, but still having an air game and a good calm strategy kind of spreads the word that we exist and we're here and, and we want to be very specific about what stage of funding and, and what sector we go after. And I think all you guys have helped us kind of spread that message incredibly well. And then there's the secondary audience for venture capital funds, and it has to do with the LPs, which are essentially the institutional investors and in, in, you know in the fund. And I would argue, you know, that these limited partners typically are very educated. You know, they talk to a lot of venture capital funds, and often they do their own homework, they do their own due diligence around why and if they should invest in a specific fund. So, you know, the value of broader air game, I, I think, serves us in front of the entrepreneurs a lot more than than the lps and uh but you know it's really a key part of what we do and um you know it's something that we're gonna uh, do on an ongoing basis actually yvonne before we adjourn i'd love to get your views sort of i mean you've worked with a ton of founders in the past and uh, that's one of the things we loved about eskenzi is is sort of you guys are on the ground talking to entrepreneurs at the very early stages of the companies and you've talked to a lot of cyber companies in the past what are i guess you know if you were to advise our entrepreneurs and founders around when to engage a, a good pr firm and how, how to engage them any any advice you, you would give them yes i think um don't do it too soon you know your job as a founder is to get your business off the ground and to make mm -hmm. it work that takes years um, and I think that by actually being distracted um, you know, constantly with, oh, gosh, here's an opportunity, here's an opportunity, can, can you take it, is very distracting and can be, you know, you don't want to take your eye off the ball. I think you need to get almost to that point where you've got two or three spokespeople that you can kind of share the load against. And I think when you've got that, then then you're in a good place to start to respond. And like you just said before, in cybersecurity, we're in this unique situation where we we have opportunities coming out of our ears because there's so many breaches, there's so many, so many, so many stories that you can jump onto and, and respond to. I think you have to be at that point where have I got the bandwidth to do it? So I think only when you have the bandwidth do you actually ever consider PR. And then I think you do need to kind of go, who is it that's going to respond? Because this is something we send to our clients every single day. There's an opportunity once or twice a day and it's kind of like how important is it for you to respond to it so I do think that you need to make sure you have enough people on the ground to do it um and I and I think you know you can do an awful lot of PR without using a PR agency um you know I look at your LinkedIn bar Mike, you're great on it and you you po you know you post all sorts of stuff up there and I think I get I get a big following from my LinkedIn so LinkedIn I still think is amazing and I do think mm -hmm. that people should spend a bit of time investing in their the the strategy around their own linkedin you know do you get some help which may not cost very much money where someone helps you put some videos together because videos are now very very important short sharp videos of, of less than a minute are fantastic you know how can you capitalize on with very little money at the beginning how can you actually use it successfully and make it go far and i think you know you can engage a good PR agency inexpensively on maybe some project basis. You know, you've got a big 
you, maybe you've got some, you, you've got a big announcement because you've just got a load of money. You want to go to the market or you may have a brand new product. There's something exciting that's going on. That's when you could actually engage a PR agency if you don't have the money to do it, just do it on a project basis. And actually ask around when you're talking about PR agencies because there are an awful lot out there that, that are not specialised, that mm -hmm. can't get into the cybersecurity space, that don't, they don't know what they're talking about. You've got to be very, very careful. You don't throw a load of good money after bad, actually. So I think talking to people that you know and seeing and learning from what they've actually done is always great. And we do that for our, our own clients. We have something called a marketing swapping intelligence um, session with all our clients that they just literally I ask them, you know, who are all the good people you're working with so that people aren't throwing their, 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 their good money uh, after something quite bad. Um, so, yeah, that's that's the sort of I, I, I would say, you know, um, put some money aside. It's always good to do it. Uh, but be very, very kind of and, and just and be quite hard with your PR agency, you know, kind of say, well, who who are you working with? Show show me what, what you've actually achieved for other clients. Um, I You know, before you actually even begin to get involved with anybody and make sure they're actually getting coverage for their clients. Um, so that that's my sort of advice. Um, I guess, you know, it, it, it's never too early to start um, with PR, but you've got to have the money to do it. And if you haven't got the money, do do a lot on social media yourself. That's great. Yeah, that is sage advice, Devon. Not to uh, shamelessly put a big plug for you guys. You know, if you if you talk to a lot of other PR firms, you know, um, primarily they promote their services. And I think the advice you just gave is so objective, which is, you know, there's smart ways and capital efficient ways to get your word out there in the early stages without necessarily spending a lot of money on PR firms. And at some stage of the company, at some scale of the company with the appropriate amount of capital, hiring a PR firm makes good sense. So I think um, that's great sage object objective advice, sir. Yvonne. Thank you. Thanks very much. And you know, Mark, I'm, I'm always happy to help your founders. Um, and ultimately, I'm here, you know, uh, for, to help anybody really to just cast an eye over a press release or, you know, to, uh, you know, I'm at my age these days, I'm kind of very happy to go and help people uh, if they need a bit of, as you say, sage advice. Um, and I know, Barmat, you're always you're always a great guy for giving advice to people as well. I know you're always very plentiful with your time, and I think I really appreciate that. And um, there was one thing I wanted to finish on, uh, just final question was, what's been your favourite piece of coverage that you've ever had, Barmak, that's really moved the needle? needle? <clears throat> well, um, you know, it's interesting. I, I sort of, um, instead of pointing out to a specific piece of coverage, I'll point out to more thematically what I think uh, is very effective. And I actually find sort of product release announcements not very effective. I think there's no. a lot of them out there. I, th I think funding releases are becoming sort of um, all over the place as well. I mean, I think there's a lot of companies raising a ton of capital. I think that's not very effective. When it comes to cybersecurity, I still believe uh, sort of breach driven and or compliance regulatory driven news gets the most attention. So, you know, if God forbid there's a zero, zero day attack, if there's a breach that has sort of broad ramifications, if there's, you know, some government intervention, like, for example, right now, we're, we're seeing this big issue of how do you use AI in a safe way? So I think kind of AI safety and AI guardrails, you know, those kind of thematic um, you know, threat vectors and or uh, actual breaches that happen, um, they get a ton of attention as they should because obviously ramifications are pretty grave. And I think appropriately attaching, not, not trying to exploit those, but appropriately attaching to those in the form of how a company could potentially prevent those from happening is, is something that is incredibly effective. So I love those more thematic announcements rather than, you know, announcements that you hear from everybody. So I think on, on that, just to just to, to kind of wrap up, I was going to say that the other thing that works very, very well is research. So if you have any research yourself mm -hmm. as a security company that's original um, and you actually can talk to that research around that research, that's still the one thing that the journalists and everybody always wants to hear about. And I And I think you just now said that if there is a breach that happens, how you can respond to that as as an industry expert so i think that everybody that in this industry should decide what is it that i'm going to be known for that I, people will remember me for and people are going to come to me for what is that going to be and i think once you decide that everything else falls and fits into place um it's very true 
It's very true. Yep. Totally agree with that, Yvonne. Perfect. Well, Bomat, fabulous to talk to you as always. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Um, and if anybody wants to listen to this, uh, they will be able to get hold of it on the Eskenzi website and uh, both Barmax LinkedIn, my LinkedIn, uh, you'll be able to find it. And uh, I wish you all a good day. And thank you once again, Barmax. It was great to talk to you, Yvonne, as always. All right. All the very best. Mm -hmm.